Now you might be wondering what's going on here, so let me explain. I bought this Lenovo ThinkPad P17 Gen 2 probably about a year and a half, two years ago. And this is the laptop that I use for all of my YouTube endeavors. This is my video editing laptop. This is my coding laptop, if you want to call it that, because I still suck at it. But it's the laptop that I use primarily for all of my editing and pretty much everything else. The SD card on my phone was starting to fail on me. So in an attempt to rescue all of that data, I backed up the SD card onto this laptop, not realizing that regardless of the fact that I have one terabyte of space on here, all of the video information that I had, which I delete all of my raw footage after I post a video, and even still with everything that's installed on here, plus the video data that I had on here, plus the backing up of the SD card, I've started to run out of room. I don't know how old my audience is, but I mean, you guys, some of you at least, can remember when desktop PCs didn't even have hard drives and they were using floppy disks to load the operating system and then other floppy disks to run programs. Then came the hard drive, and the hard drive was like, oh man, you, you've got a hard drive on your computer? The first desktop PC that I had in my house had a 500 megabyte hard drive, which at the time was like, ooh, you, you got a lot of space. Then I upgraded that computer. I think I was probably 13 or 14 years old at the time. I upgraded that computer to a 5 gigabyte hard drive. And I still, to this day, have that hard drive kicking around in my toolbox. So thinking along those lines, when I bought this, I thought one terabyte would keep me until the end of time. Not so much the case. This laptop is the, like I said, the P17 Gen 2 mobile workstation. It's got the NVIDIA graphics card. It's got 32 gigabytes of RAM, and it's got a one terabyte hard drive with an i7 processor. It, it, it's pretty good. But getting back to it, I started to run out of room and in a panic, I bought not only an additional hard drive, which I didn't even know hard drives look like this. I'm used to the big spinny ones that go into desktop PCs. And looking at this little tiny thing, this almost looks like a, a RAM stick to me. So I figured I would put this in because this computer can actually handle three solid state drives and it also has four RAM slots. Now I've got two of them filled with 16 gig chips each and I've got two empty ones which lets me add up to 128 gigabytes is what this motherboard will handle. So I figured, hell, everybody's got some filler content. So I got these RAM chips to go in the computer along with the solid state drive that I'm going to add. The chipset here is 32 gigs per, which gives me 64 gigs. And on top of the 32 that are in there now, I'll have 96 gigs of RAM, which again, should be all I'm going to need for what I do with this, but I guess we'll find out. So I got these chips and these are from a brand that I've never heard of called NVTech. But if you look online and you start pricing this DDR4 RAM, it does get kind of pricey. So I found this set of chips for a hundred bucks, which all the other ones were almost double that price. So I'm going to put these in and I'll see how they do. And going back to that five gig drive that I was talking about before, this is a Western digital hard drive. And the hard drive that I had previously, the five gig one was a Western digital. So this, this kind of has a little bit of a nostalgic feel to it because going back to when I was a kid, I mean, Western Digital was like the hard drive to put in. So I'm going to install this. I'm going to install these, and we'll see how it is. So the first thing I need to do with this is I need to flip it over. Now, I've already gone through the trouble of removing this bottom panel here. It's one screw, and it hinges up here, but then there's these little locking tabs around the sides that you have to kind of pry up on, and eventually it'll pop off, or you'll break these tabs off so I don't want to go putting it back on to 
show you, but when I put it back together, you'll see it'll kind of snap into place. Now to get the access for the hard drive, it's just right here. And if I were to just do a two chip RAM upgrade, the RAM is actually right underneath these flaps. So if I lift up this flap and I pull these chips out, I could just replace them with the ones that I bought and I'd be done. But I want to save these and I want to add the other chips to the second bank. Now, the slots on these are numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4. And when I ran a CPU ID, I found that these RAM chips are in slot 1 and slot 3. But this is dual channel RAM, so that's proper. Put a matching pair into 1 and 3 and then the other matching pair into slots two and four. Now, unfortunately, slots two and four are nowhere easy to access. You actually have to remove a couple of screws from the bottom, flip it over, and pull out the keyboard. But before I go poking and prodding inside of here or taking any of this stuff out of the package, I want to kind of electrically ground myself and discharge any static that I might have in me. So I've got this grounding strap that came with the silicone mat that I'm working on here. So really all you do is plug this into an outlet, put on the bracelet, and then you are grounding yourself and preventing any kind of static buildup so that any kind of discharge will not damage the components inside this laptop. So I'm gonna plug this in real quick. I've got it on my wrist. I'll just touch a couple of bare metal surfaces anywhere I can possibly find one. So I want to open up or pick up this little flap here now that I've got this flap exposed, there's two thermal pads that are mounted here. Look at this little graphic here, and we can see that drive number one is the bottom one, and number two is the top one. So I'll just put that out of the way. I want to peel the layer of plastic off the top of this thermal pad. And then I'll just take the drive, stick it into the slot, and secure it in place with the screw. So I'll take the screw out. Take the drive out of the package. And then you want to line the notch up with the notch that's inside the circuit board. So peel this up. Now there is a little bit of irony that I stopped biting my nails about a year and a half ago and I still don't have any. So this is still kind of difficult. So I'll take the drive, I put it in. Take the screw, snug it down, and then that should be it. So put that cover back where it came from. Hey, I like my paperweight. Now, in order to get to the second set of RAM banks, like I said, I have to take a few screws out, but these are all captive screws. Now, this is the first laptop I've ever worked on that has captive screws. I'm used to having to make a little cardboard cutout or take a piece of paper and draw where all of the holes are and then placing each of the screws into their little respective drawing and putting it off to the side. So this is something that's a little bit new to me. So I'm gonna take out this screw, this screw, and then the ones in the middle, really. It's like this one here, these ones, this one, and maybe that one, who the hell knows. I, I, I know that there's a few screws that hold it in place. I did get the keyboard to slide back yesterday, so this is what I did. So I'll just loosen that one. I'll loosen this one. This one, this one here. Turn the laptop over. Now to remove the keyboard on this computer, you slide the keyboard up until these back row of keys are kind of flush with this lip. And then the entire keyboard just kind of lifts out. So an easy way to do that is to spin the computer around and grab it. If you have fingernails, you can grab it along this edge right here and just pull. And now we can see right here, if I just grab it right there and I pull, the whole thing just kind of lifts out like that. And then take this, flip it around, lay it there. This one ribbon has a tendency to want to lift out. So you may have to reset this before you put the keyboard back in. So just be aware of that. 
So from here, I could take this cover off. Now this cover is where the other RAM chips reside, as well as the third hard drive. Actually, the, the main hard drive resides under this cover. I'll spin this back around. Now there's three screws that hold this plate in place. So I'll just take these out. These are non-captive screws. So just put them off to the side and don't lose them and don't drop them, which I have a very bad tendency to do. This cover plate comes out by shifting it this way. And again, if you have fingernails, you can kind of grab some of the lips on the plate, slide it forward, and then grab underneath it and lift it out. So again, you can see there's some thermal paste underneath there. It's actually like a thermal pad. And then right here, I have access to RAM chip here and the RAM chip here. Again, line up the notch with the pin on here. Press down gently until it snaps into place. Wash, rinse, and repeat. And that should be it. I'm just gonna reassemble it real quick. I'll plug it in and we'll see what the results look like. Now replacing the keyboard it's the exact opposite of the way it came out. So you just slide the top back into this lip here, press down, and then as you press down, pull towards you. And that's it. Flip it over. Tighten all the screws. And we're ready to test it out. Now, I do want to make one note that before I did this, I went into the BIOS configuration because this has an internal battery that can't be removed. So I went into the BIOS configuration and there's a setting for disabling the internal battery, which allows you to do all of this without the possibility of any voltage going through the system. So you want to make sure that you disable the battery before you go taking your laptop apart if you don't have a removable battery. The way that it's configured, the next time I plug this into the adapter, it will re-enable the battery, and then I won't have to worry about going into the BIOS configuration. I may have to go in just to enable the second drive, but I'm not sure. I haven't gone through this yet, so we'll find out. Okay, so everything looks like it powered up properly. I'll go to my start menu. I'll go to CPU-Z. If I go into memory, we can see right here, I've got 96 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. I go into SPD, I can see each of the slots, what they have inside of here. So everything looks like it's okay. As far as the additional hard drive is concerned, if I go into File Exploder, I don't see it here. So what I probably have to do is go into Computer Management. So I go to Start Menu, Computer Management, and then under Disk Management, it says I must initialize a disk before Logical Disk Manager can access it. And I really don't have to do anything special here. I just hit OK. And it will say that I have 1,863 gigatajigatas gigatas online. I don't have it allocated yet. So if I go and right click, go to new simple volume, hit next, basically just pick all of the defaults, unless I want to change anything. I'm just going to assign this to drive D, which is fine. I'll use NTFS with the default allocation size. And then the volume label, I'll just call it drive two. Hit OK. Hit finish. It'll do a quick format and it will create the second drive. So you don't have to change any jumpers. You don't have to daisy chain anything. This is totally different than I'm used to, but that's it. Now I've got two terabytes of additional space. I've got 96 gigs of RAM. So hopefully now I've got enough hard drive space to last me for a while and enough RAM that Shotcut will stop shitting the bed on me anytime I try to undo something because that is my biggest concern with this laptop is that no matter how much I try to get anything to work, Shotcut and other video editing software seems to give me a hard time. So I've got to use proxies and I have to kind of dumb down my video quality while I'm editing and it's kind of hard to see exactly what's going on on the screen. So hopefully that alleviates some of the issues. So my takeaways on this are that the RAM and hard drive upgrade are worthwhile for my use case. 
They may not be for everybody. And keep in mind that a lot of these consumer grade laptops that you find nowadays have the RAM soldered directly to the motherboard. So you may or may not even be able to do this type of upgrade to your computer. For me, the installation was very simple. It was very straightforward. The hardest part that I had was trying to figure out how to get the keyboard off. And that was just mainly because I lack in the fingernail department. <laughs> I do like the captive screws that they put into the Lenovo shell. It's uh, very different than what I'm used to, but I do like that they use captive screws on the shell. After doing some testing, I did find that the NVTech RAM did bottleneck my bus speed a little bit. It was originally 3200 megahertz, and with the NVTech and the Samsung by themselves, the bus speed is 3200 megahertz, but when they go together, it drops it down to 2933 which leads me to believe that there's some kind of chip incompatibility. So what I did was I ordered another set of the NVTech RAM, and I'm going to install that, and I'll have the full 128 gigabytes. I have noticed a little bit of an increase in performance with the chips the way they are. It's still not letting me edit down in 4K, but I can at least run a 720p with a proxy, and it's smooth, and the picture quality is a lot better than what I've been editing with, so... I'm pretty happy with that result, and it does seem like a lot of my applications are loading quicker, and hopefully it's not just a placebo effect. So that'll about wrap it up for this video. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up. If you enjoy the channel and you haven't done so yet, please subscribe. And if you know somebody who'd be interested in this type of stuff, share it with a friend because sharing is caring. Check out my affiliate links in the description down below at no additional cost to you. It just puts a little bit of catnip into my kitty and it helps me with my future channel endeavors. If you're on that cesspool, that is Facebook. Join the group, Elegoo Neptune Series 3D Printers, Mods, Tweaks, and Improvements, where we offer 24-hour live chats and community support, do the occasional giveaway, and blatantly abuse the everyone tag. But hey, at least we're not a spam fest of 3D artists like those other pages. If you got 10 seconds to kill, check out my website, www.theferalengineer.com. It's just a whole bunch more of the same stuff, but it justifies the 12 bucks a year I spend on the URL. And once again, thank you to all of my catnip contributors, both past, present, and future. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon.